Hello again and welcome to our Hello Fresh meal kits. Today we're going to be making home style chicken and biscuit pot pie. I want to say thank you to the Food Education Fund and the New York City Department of Education CTE team for providing this for our students. We're going to unpackage our fresh thyme, our chicken concentrate packages, our flour, our biscuits, we also have a number of carrots, so we can take those out of the bag. Our next ingredient is going to be an onion, some celery, and some cream cheese, and some garlic cloves. Our meal kit also comes with two packages of chicken strips, which we're going to leave in a separate container to keep it safe from other foods. So to get started, we're going to turn our oven on to 425 degrees to preheat it and we'll begin with our carrots. We're gonna peel all of our carrots. In fact, we're gonna prep all of our food first before we start doing our knife cuts. And the reason that I do this is so that I can keep my cutting board nice and clean and free from all the scraps. So our first job is to peel all of our carrots. We discard those carrot peels. Next, we're gonna take our onion. We have a top end, which is the bloom, and the bottom, which is the root. We're going to cut off the bloom and cut through the root, and then we're going to peel the outer layer. We'll do that again with the second half, and we'll set that aside. And we'll make sure that now we clean all of those pieces of the onion skin from our cutting board. Now we've washed our thyme and our celery. We're going to crush our garlic and remove the skin. Once we have that done and we've cleaned our board, now we can go ahead and start mincing our garlic. So mincing is a technique in which we cut it into super fine pieces. So we're gonna mince the garlic, set that aside, and now we're gonna work on our carrots. So trimming the top and trimming the bottoms, we're gonna get our carrots set up, and we'll cut them in half, and then we'll cut them into quarters. From there, those quarters will cut again in half or into thirds if it's a larger piece. We'll go ahead and cross cut and do a nice small dice for our project. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prep all of my carrots in advance, get them all into the stick shapes that I need. Again, those larger pieces can be cut into thirds, the skinnier pieces can be cut just in half. Once I have my cutting board set up, and then I can go ahead and work in a nice organized fashion, keeping my prep area nice and organized. So there I'm going to do my cross cuts and get my small dice on my carrots. I'm going to move them off my cutting board and onto a plate so I can again just keep on working in a nice clean and organized manner. Okay, when we're working and doing lots of chopping, especially on a firmer object like a carrot, we want to make sure that we keep our fingers tucked in and we work at a pace that we are comfortable with so that we are working nice and safely with our product. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do, I'm just going to move the garlic out of the way because I didn't realize how many carrots we'd have for this recipe. Now we're going to move on to our onion. We're going to do horizontal, vertical, and cross cuts. So here are horizontal cuts. Now we're going to cut our vertical strips and then we're going to cross cut into our small dice. When we get down towards the end, we want to make sure that if we have any larger pieces that we cut them into the small dice as well, removing the root end and keeping just the main part of the onion. We'll do that again, horizontal, vertical, cross cuts. Again, keeping your fingers tucked so that you work nice and safely as you're working with a nice sharp knife. Our last item is our celery. Again, always wiping down our cutting board, keeping everything nice and clean. Our celery will cut either into quarters or into halves, depending on the size that you have. And again, cross cut into nice small dice. So we'll bring that all onto our mise en place plate here. And now we have our mirepoix, carrots, onions, and celery. We'll put the garlic to the side as well and set that prep to the side while now we work on our thyme. So our fresh thyme leaves, we want to rinse them, dry them. Take your first 
um, piece of time and just pull against the stem. And what you'll see is that when you pull carefully against the stem, you'll pull off all the seeds and then you'll discard the stem. So we'll continue to do that for our bunch of time. So for the recipe of four, we're going to use the entire package. For a recipe of two, you can use half of the package. So next we want to mince our thyme. So again, back and forth using your guiding hand on top to anchor your knife and then rock it back and forth until you get nice small fine cuts. Again, wipe down our cutting board. And now we're gonna open up our packages of chicken. So the chicken comes prepared for you already into smaller pieces. Mine were more like cubes than they were strips, but they were cut already into the smaller portions that were needed for this recipe. Empty the packages into a separate bowl. Make sure you clean and sanitize your hands. And now let's get started with our cooking. So we need a 12 inch pan, a large pan, to do our cooking. So we're gonna allow that to heat up while we just take our chicken and pat it with a paper towel to get off any sort of excess liquid. I like to work on a sheet pan because then it makes it easier to clean. We're gonna season with salt and pepper, add a little olive oil to the pan. That's nice and hot and then we'll go ahead and add our chicken into the pan. If your pan is not large enough, you may need to use two pans or you may need to cook in batches. And here we go, nice sauteing so we get some nice brown on the outside. We're gonna partially cook the chicken here. It's not going to completely cook. We're gonna finish that part in the oven. So we're just looking to get a little bit of browning on the outside. Make sure that you do not overcook your chicken breast at this point, otherwise you will make it very dry and tough. So now in the same pan, once we've removed all of the chicken, we're gonna add just a little more olive oil, and now we're gonna go in with our mirepoix, carrots, onions, and celery. We'll give that a nice stir, and we'll keep watching with that, seasoning with salt and pepper, making sure that we don't uh, burn any of our vegetables, but that we are cooking them nice and th nicely through until they're tender. We also want to add um, three quarters of the thyme into our mixture at this moment. And we'll just give it a nice stir and keep the pan moving, keep the, uh, the items moving within the pan so that nothing burns. And this should take maybe about three to five minutes or until the vegetables are tender. If you need to work on a lower flame, please make sure that you do so. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in two tablespoons, I'm sorry, four tablespoons or two ounces of butter into the pan. We're gonna melt that down and then we're going to begin our base of making our roux. The next step is to add our flour into our pan and start to cook it. So you'll see that you have lots of really good, delicious um, brown bits that are forming on the bottom. That's all flavor and that's our thickening agent, which now when we add our water, followed by our chicken concentrate package packages, this will add lots of really great flavor and this is where uh, primarily our salt is coming from. And it will also start to thicken in our pan. So we wanna make sure that we are working with that and bringing it to a boil for about three to five minutes until it thickens. Then we're gonna turn the flame off and we're going to add in our cream cheese and we're just gonna stir this in to combine. If you feel you need to add a few drops of water to thin it out, now would be the time to do so. We'll add our chicken back in and we'll give it a stir. In fact, this is when I saw it was just a little thick. We want it to be slightly loose because as it cooks in the oven, it's going to continue to thicken. So I'll just put in a few drops of water just to thin out my sauce once again. So now we're gonna prepare our biscuits. So you're gonna peel open the can, and if it doesn't pop, just tap it gently on the side of your cutting board. A nice little tap, it pops open, and you're gonna take your biscuits out. So I'm gonna prepare this in two different ways. So I just took the biscuits and kind of gently stretched them nice and thin. Not too thin, but I stretched them out, uh, maybe to about a third of the size. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold off two biscuits so I can show you how to make this recipe if you don't have an oven. So let's just talk about what's going in the oven. We're gonna take some melted butter and brush the tops of our biscuits. We're gonna take a little bit of that leftover thyme and sprinkle that on top of each biscuit. And then we'll go ahead and get this into the oven. 
Now, if you did not have an oven, which I've gotten a few um, comments from students that they didn't have an oven, I wanna show you how you can make this in a pan. So you'll take your biscuits and you'll just uh, put a little bit of butter, put your thyme, put your biscuits in a nice in a pan that's on a nice low flame and put a lid on it. Check it after about two to three minutes and you can see it gets nice and golden on the bottom. You can flip it over and keep the lid on so that you're creating somewhat of an oven environment. Turn them again every two minutes or so to keep them from burning. And then when you take them out, you can test and see if in the center they're nicely cooked. Then you can go ahead and you can serve them whole or you can slice them in half and you can see how they're nicely cooked on the inside. So essentially, if you did not have an oven, you would just cook the uh, recipe as we showed you. You would then need another pan to cook your biscuits, and then you can go ahead and put them on top of your chicken pot pie. All right, back to um, those that do have the oven. We're gonna take this out. You're gonna see that your biscuits are gonna be nice and golden. And here we are with our chicken pot pie. One scoop with a biscuit is our serving. Super delicious, super fresh, very filling. And if you want to see more recipes like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram.